Well, I said, come on, baby, hold our shit, you going on. Come on, baby, baby, now you can't go wrong. Here you take it, hold our shit, you going on. Well, I said, come on, baby, we got chicken in the heart. I said, come on, baby, 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 now you can't go wrong. We ain't paying it. Right, after 48 years, it's nice to be back in Glastonbury Town. I believe it's 48 years. For, since. Well, about that, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Certainly, certainly a long time. But if you go back to the early days, and, and 48 years ago, and I remember us young lads from Glastonbury all used to come into the town hall, what recollections have you got from those... All those years gone by, 48 years. Well, well lots, a lot of them, really. I, I mean, the point was, we didn't start off at the town hall. When, when we started promoting our own dances, the band, yeah. um, we, our very first promotion was at the Red Lion Inn at Somerton. Was it? Yeah, we, we, we ran a dance over there and thought, oh, this is a good idea, you know. And then our first sort of regular place was Coxley Village Hall. We stacked right. about 300 in mm. there. And uh, we had the idea of turning the lights down and putting some red spotlights in right of course the, the, the youngsters like that rather a lot so, done, yeah. so that that was our original and it wasn't until a bit later we played in glassbury town hall um, for bristol promoter a guy called matt keller right and um which was okay but i remember thinking to myself i, I, you know, I could do this better than this you know mm. and, and it was that was the sort of thing that gave us the impetus to start doing our own of course we did eventually finish up here as you say about 48 yeah. years ago yeah after the first night of playing in here, yeah. did you, as a band, expect to become as big as you did, or go, or move on, or did you expect to be a one-off? No, not really, because as I say, we were getting work in other areas, so we were we were doing a bit, but uh, it just mushroomed. Uh, uh, and when you're young, you you assume that's what's going to happen. You yeah. know, you 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 think, oh, this this is what being a band's about. So if you got popular, that that you thought that was what you were you were to at the time. Yeah, that's you right. Know? So it, we didn't think too hard. It just all went on mm. organically, really. It just mm. grew, you know. Yeah. yeah. Going back to the group, because it's, it's an unusual thing to find an original group and all the band members still together. How did you all meet up in the first place? Well, that's, that's a long time. I was running a band called the Homesteaders. Yeah. And originally, we, we were a skiffle group. The THS based the lot, you know. Right. Uh, Mike Argent had... Um, joined up with me on lead guitar. My wife played banjo. Did yeah, she? Which is a group, yeah. Did she? Yeah. And um, we had a lady on washboard. But then we had a couple of lads, um, uh, Dave Way, who was yeah. in Wookie Hole, where we came from. He played bass. And a lad called Ian Steenson from Wells played drums. Right. Um, they gradually fell by the wayside. Um, and then we were approached by a um, gentleman called Ron Fellows. Yes. Uh, who'd heard about us from from uh, Street Glastonbury area? That's right. And he had a drummer called John Lacey, and they were in a band I think called the Cannonballs. Right. And uh, they were interested in making a move, and uh, so then Eddie Dark and the Solvels. The relationship of Solvels to Cannonballs is is obviously mm. uh, so. Eddie Dark and the Solvels uh, were were sort of formed at that level. And we used to rehearse in the, the pub at Wookie Hole. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that, that's basically how we got together. I think so. Yeah. As time went on, you, you became particularly popular, especially around this area, but it even became more nationwide, you got your popularity. But then also, you, you had a newsletter, and you also had your own fan club. Now, that's an unusual thing. It was brilliant. For a local I mean, group. the locals did seem to like us for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I think a couple of girls in Wells initially started the fan club, but I think it was run. Uh, I had a partner in Westside Promotions at the time in the early days yeah. called Garth Mutant. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, who was with me all the way through the promotions at Glasbury Town Hall. Uh, his wife, Anne, I think, used to actually run the fan club and do the newsletters and things like that. Did she? Yeah. Yeah, that came on a monthly basis, if uh, I can yeah, remember. Yeah, that's right, yeah. 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 And we had our badge with a cannon on. That's right. Yeah. Going, back, uh, going back to that again, we're, obviously we're going to come through the years as time has gone on. 
Um, I can remember you going to Birmingham. Yeah, um, and you finished. I think it was fourth in a national competition. Yeah, that was a mixed. That was a mixed evening. It started off. We related. We would won the heats down here. Right. And in Bristol, the Carnival, we beat all Did the you? Bristol bands. Yeah. Um, we had everywhere we went. We had two coach loads of supporters. And when we went to Birmingham, it was exactly the same. We had two coach loads. About eighty odd people came up to Birmingham with us to support us, which was wonderful. Yeah. However, when we got to the hall. Uh, the, the, the ballroom rather, mm. um, we were parked on, there was two sides of the stage, it was a revolving stage, and one looked like a film set. Right. The other one looked like a storage cupboard. There were two grand pianos on the same stage, with oh. hardly room for the band to get on stage. No. So um, we started off going, I started off with our signature tune, Walk yep. Don't Run, which we still yep. do, yep. played the instrumental, introduced Eddie Dark, yep. and Ron walked on stage, started singing, and immediately, the microphone volume dropped to nothing. No. Yeah, and we couldn't get any attention. Of course, you've got 4,000 people in front of you, jeering in yeah. some cases, because they couldn't hear the singer. And um, despite trying to get attention, the mics basically stayed like that, which sort of ruined our set. Um, did, yeah. So the instruments were coming through all right, but you couldn't really hear the vocals properly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so as I say, I I'm not saying we would have won if it was any better, but uh, I don't no. know if we have beaten by, by Goban. But the interesting thing was that the three local bands, the Midlands bands, all had perfect sound. Did they? And they, they come first, second and third. Oh. But that's the music. Makes you that's ask the questions, music then. Makes you ask questions, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the group that actually won it was the Fortunes, who yeah. Um, yeah. went on whether, in the 60s. Whether they were in that, at that stage, yeah. how they were when they finally finished up, but it was definitely the Fortunes. So it was certainly yeah. Rod Allen was the lead singer yeah. in those days, yeah. and they yeah. went on to have numerous hits. Yeah. And they were, yeah. One of the leading chart toppers. Oh, there was the no 60s. argument that the winning band were fantastic. Yeah, they were. Yeah. 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 Would you put that down? Well, the next question I was going to ask: Would you put that down as a highlight of your career? But obviously, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> the highlight of my career was last Saturday night. That's true. That was that was yeah. the best. I think that was the most enjoyable yeah. and best show we've ever done. Mm. Obviously, there was a time after so many years. How did the band or who decided? that the band weren't going to continue? What, this back in the 60s? Yes. Well, basically, a few things happened. My wife got pregnant. Yeah. Um, and the wives always supported us. They always came to the dances. It was their job, Linda, Vera, Ron's wife, yeah. and, and Carol. Their job was starting the dancing. So they always got up and did the dancing. When Carol was eight months pregnant, she was out here. Yeah. She said, I really don't want to go dancing anymore. Yeah. And I really didn't want to go and do the gigs no. uh, without her there. Uh, so the band carried on, changed the sound slightly, and carried on as a four-piece. Yeah. Um, and they kept going for about a year. Nick took over as uh, leader of the band to do yeah. the organising. Yeah. I still managed them because by that right. time we had Westside Promotions Agency. Yeah. So I was still their manager mm. and got them their bookings, but I didn't actively play. And they went on for about a year, and then different family pressures as they were yeah, all getting older, yeah. um, and a bit of musical difference coming in as well. Yeah. Uh, and they decided to call it a day, but it was, mm. it was never acrimonious and, and, uh, yeah. or anything like that. No, like the Liam, that's right. Liam and the other Oasis yeah. people, you know. But uh, so, as I say, we've all, we've all always kept in touch. Yeah. Can you actually remember your last appearance with Eddie Dark and the Solvos back in the 60s? I, I honestly can't. I know it was written up because I used to write a column, <laughs> funnily enough, yeah. for the Midsummer se a series of papers. I used to write yeah. a column called the show, by, by the Showman. Yeah, and I did, right. I did mm. write it up, but I can't remember where it was. It might well have been here, no. but I can't remember. No. No. So when everybody split, you went, obviously went and you had your own business at Westside Promotions. Yeah, my, I got my music vicariously. Uh, I was meeting musicians, I was working yeah. with musicians, I was selling musical instruments, I was mm. still getting to play in the shop. Of course, uh, and that that's that did me. Yeah, you know? yeah. But what about the rest of the lads when they when they all left? Did they go and play with different bands? Well, it's different for different people. Um, Mike Argent, yeah, went one route. He he went on playing, joined several different dance bands and trios, um, pop and and uh, jazz mm. and, and dance band. Uh, he also took up classical guitar and attained a grade eight. And he's still at it now. He's he's in his uh, just shortly uh, yeah. uh, getting a degree in music that he's done at the Open University. So he's he's carried on playing. Mm. But he hadn't actively played in a band for I don't think about uh, about since about ten years ago. Yeah. Um, no. Johnny Lacey went on playing in bands. Yes. He played with some bands locally and and only actually stopped playing I think about, about eight ten years ago. Ron 
had his own interests. He was very yeah. interested, as he still is, in, mm. in folk and acoustic music, country and western particularly. Yeah. And uh, he got together with a guy called Paul Topless, who also worked for me. Oh, did he? Yeah. And, and they wrote and uh, compiled and recorded mm. a, a very, very good album of sort of country style music, yeah. uh, country rock style music, which uh, has had quite a lot of success around the world mm. uh, in the urban punk charts. You can still buy it on, on eBay. It's, it's called For Those Alone. Yeah. And somebody ripped it off and is actually selling their record from all that long ago still on eBay. Well, uh, so for 20 quid, you can still hear him. Uh, <laughs> but he's not getting anything out of it. But so all he went on with music, learned to play banjo yeah. extremely well. Fantastic mm. acoustic player, yeah. which I think is a bit frustrating for him because he doesn't play in the band. Of course, that's right. Yeah. yeah.